here we are. What do you think about all of this uh, this inbreeding um, stuff going on today with this the uh, the pedigree and and kind of what? Well, what so so first, Jane, I'll say that just you know when you're choosing your spouse, your partner, you're entitled to have whatever you know you like. Girls with blonde hair, good for you. Blue mm-hmm. eyes, good for you. You know, we're all entitled to have our preferences, right? That's fine. That's fine. But what? And so if somebody wants a golden retriever, I'm cool with that. If they want a border collie, I'm cool with that. I have no problem with any of that. But what people don't realize is that the purebred, purebred dogs that have the papers, like the one that recently won uh, the... the um, what's it called Westminster Kennel Westminster Dog Show right Mm. those dogs are unbelievably inbred I mean they have bred brother to sister father to daughter and they do this this has been going on for over a century these dogs are stunningly inbred there was a study in Britain that looked at the genetics of all the pugs that were registered in Britain of whom there were many thousands And the geneticists looked at the DNA of these dogs and identified that although there were thousands of individuals, they only had as much genetic variation as you would typically find in a few dozen dogs, that they Mm. were almost clones of each other. Now, the thing is, you might say, well, so what? You know, if that's what it takes to give the dog the curly tail that I want or the whatever. But the problem is, the problem is that when you select like that, you act, you're you selecting for things you want. You're selecting for a certain shape of a ear, a certain color of eye. But the method you're using is so crude that you accidentally capture other genes. All of us carry genes that if they were allowed to be expressed would do us harm. But because we're fairly genetically diverse individuals and our parents were not each other's brother and sister, hopefully, you know, the usually we're not are, usually our parents aren't sharing the same recessive traits. And so they're exactly, not expressed. exactly the recessive right. traits, the dangerous bad traits are hidden because that's that's how genetics works. And um, and you look at a Westminster start- dog show and, and you're getting a bit of survivorship bias there. You're not you're not seeing all the yeah. times that that went horrifically wrong. You're you're seeing well, exactly. the, the time that it went right. Exactly. And so and so these inbred lines of dogs, they carry terrifyingly high rates of uh, recessive genetic disease, which is mm-hmm. often cancer, but can be many other kinds of disease. And there are some breeds of dog that it's more or less guaranteed that they will get this or that form of disease in their lifetime. And that's just so unnecessary because, as I say, I'm not not telling people you cannot love a dog that has (laughs) golden hair or whatever, you whatever, you know, that's all cool. I'm I'm completely cool with that. But nowadays we have a so much better understanding of genetics that you could have that without the disease. And that's really something that we have to move towards because it's a it's a it's a cruelty yeah. the germans have a word for it quailzucht which is cruel breeding you know germans have a word for everything wow that's that's <laughs> interesting 